Good morning and welcome to the seven elements of art. Today we're exploring form, which is number five. We've done line, shape, cut value, and today we're exploring form. And the next week we get to do texture, which is absolutely wonderful. I've got a uh, shape here. Uh, we all recognize this lovely little shape and uh, it is a 3D form and we know it is because you can feel it and touch it and see it and uh, it is in taking up space and it has its own form and as artists what we try to do is create the illusion of 3D. So we can draw it so easily in a 2D, and but the challenge is to make it look 3D. And it's an illusion, and you do that with value, which we discovered last, which we explored last week, not, uh, not um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I've got here some examples of what we're, uh, we'll be exploring. We're going to be taking really lovely, simple shapes um, and turning them from 2D to 3D, which is really easy to do with the wet in wet process. So we're going to practice that. I've also got um, this cute little cat that I used these same shapes and created a, a cat using the uh, same method, which are these simple shapes that you turn into 3D objects with a little bit of wet and wet. So it'll be lots of um, wonderful practice in wet and wet and exploring uh, your colours. I've also got, I thought today, that the seahorse would make a lovely example of um, a shape to explore. And I'm going to not be replicating this one, but using these shapes and doing it a bit like the uh, cat. So um, creating rounds and uh, pointy shapes and more round shapes and some ovals, etc., and do something a little bit uh, interesting and uh, definitely lovely and vi uh, vibrant. The uh, paper I'm going to be using today, most unusually, is Smooth 300 GSM Arch. This paper is like 20 years old and it's still absolutely superb. And the reason I'm using Smooth is because as you're creating these shapes, as you're painting them, you need to drag your brush over the edge of the shape and you want every little bit to be coming in contact with the paper and that means that Smooth paper uh, is going to be brilliant for that job. Smooth paper, also called hot press because of the process that it goes through that is literally hot. And it's so named smooth because it's beautifully smooth. It's incredibly beautiful to touch. Now, if you don't have smooth paper, you might have cold press and that's going to be the next best thing. Um, this seahorse was painted on rough paper. Uh, you can see just here that my brush has been dragged across the surface and you get these lovely rough marks. Rough textured paper is absolutely brilliant for texture. Um, smooth paper, absolutely brilliant for realism. Not that we're doing realism, but beautiful for realism and beautiful for botanical art, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to, that's what I've got planned in mind. Uh, as always, I've got a lovely book to show you and talk about form. So it's the same book that I talked about last time, Walter Foster, Drawing Concepts, and he has a section on form. So if I move it over there, there. So he talks about stuff like setting up a lighting box. If you've never done that, it is a brilliant exercise. They tend to be drawing exercises, but you, you could start with your drawing and add a bit of colour later in any medium you wanted to. Uh, he talks about doing form just with two tones. He talks about form doing one, two, three, four, five tones. He talks about breaking shapes up into shapes. So um, putting in those lovely flat areas. And down the bottom here, he's again talking about the light source and then he talks about shadows and stuff like that. Really worth exploring. And I'm dramatically simplifying it and turning into a fun exercise where we just talk about form. Uh, so that's that same Drawing Concepts book that is absolutely wonderful for everything to do with the seven elements of art. Now, 
as a bonus, we're going to be talking about diffusion. And for that, I recommend this book. I hope that I've recommended Linda Kemp's book many, many times because Linda Kemp wrote this book called Watercolour Painting Outside the Lines. And if you only ever own one watercolour book, this is the one. It covers a bit of absolutely everything. Funnily enough, not really a bit on form, which was a little bit surprising, but she does this section on diffusion. And this is where I was first introduced. I'm moving the book here. Yeah. This is where I was first introduced to the concept of diffusion. She paints this uh, here, this horse negatively, and she does it in phthalo blue. Uh, so spoiler alert, that colour diffuses, and that is exactly what I discovered with my cat, is that the blue was constantly diffusing and I was using a phthalo blue. And the other colour she uses is phthalo blue and quinacridone violet. And quinacridone violet also diffuses because she paints this lovely little painting very carefully. Then she sticks it in water and looks at how the colours diffuse. So we're going to do an exercise, not by placing it in water, but just dragging water over it. Very, very easy to do. And I'll just do her book as well and just talk very quickly 